New Testament. And it encapsulates the gospel message. It encapsulates the answer to the most important question someone can have. Okay, I need, I'm a sinner. I need salvation. Okay, it's the power of God. How do I have the power of God to give me salvation? The just shall live by faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, Paul told the Philippian jailer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can the gospel affect my life? If it cannot, this verse is untrue. Because it says it's to everyone that believeth. Everyone that believeth. The content of the gospel, the power of the gospel and the salvation could not be better summed up in one phrase than this one. The righteousness of God. Because it's all about God's righteousness, not our own. It's all about God's acting on our behalf, not our own. God is the instigator of salvation, and He is the culminator of salvation. It's all of Him. It is because God is righteous, just that we even need salvation. God will not share His glory with another, or else He ceases to be God and becomes just another little G God. Isaiah 42.8 says that. Therefore, since he is a righteous God, only those who are righteous can fellowship with him. He cannot be unequally yoked together with unrighteousness since he is perfect righteousness. Since man is anything but righteous, and if I hurt your feelings, sorry, take comfort in the fact that I hurt my own as well. Come on, we know ourselves. We know, we know, we know we're not that great. We're not righteous. Only God supernaturally declaring me to be righteous even allows me to stand a chance be fellowshipping with him, be yoked with him, joint heirs with him. And since God is righteous, he can't just say people are righteous. There is a crime that has been committed against his holy person. It has to be paid for. Well, since Christ is righteous God, he could both pay the penalty as the eternal sin bearer and full righteousness would be satisfied. This is the plan of the gospel, the righteousness of God. Being laid open, being manifested, being revealed, seen in all facets of the gospel is the righteousness of God. God is righteous and so he demands sacrifice. God is righteous so he satisfies the sacrifice. God is righteous so he wants to forgive. God is righteous so he does forgive. It's all about God being righteous. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. God is righteous and true. The revelation of God's righteousness is truth and has been given for us to believe by faith. And as we believe, God grants us faith from faith to faith. It's not about our emotions or our feelings or our deep sensitivity. Truth is to be believed, and since the righteousness of God is truth, it must be believed. The righteousness of God. I think this last phrase given by the Apostle Paul in verse 17, the just shall live by faith, is a just in case someone reading doesn't quite get it. <laughs> Sum it all up from the Old and New Testament. The just, the righteous, that's the same word as righteous, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith or by faith toward faith, by God's faith. The Bible says the worlds were framed by faith. The Bible says that the word of God was given by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The righteousness of God is revealed by faith unto faith. Culmination, growth, strengthening of faith. As it is written, the righteous man, the just, will only live by faith. The content of the gospel is amazing. Life, satisfying life in this world and eternal life in the next will only come by faith in Jesus Christ alone. Now, I say that this morning and I want to apply it this way. Apply it first of all to those that don't know Christ as their Savior, those who don't have this relationship with Him. I'm going to apply it by saying this. You can live by faith. You can have eternal life. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. God has a gift of eternal life, salvation that He desires to give. But it's not of works, lest any man should boast. 
If you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you don't have a real relationship with Jesus Christ, I implore you today, turn your back on hedonism. Turn your back on religionism. And put your faith in the person of Jesus Christ. Call on the name of the Lord. That's faith. Calling on the name of the Lord. And you will be saved. You will be saved. That's a promise from God's word. Not a promise from me or from this church. It's a promise from God. Those that do know Christ as your Savior, friends, as you have received him, so walk ye in him. How did you receive Christ? By faith. As you have received him by faith, live by faith. Walk in him by faith. Follow him by faith. Did he say hedonism or religion will win in the end? No. Can I meet God halfway? No. I do my part, he does his? No. Maybe I can do rituals and religions, religious sacred duties, and he will see that and be pleased? No. What I see in this text, and it's as clear as it could be, is that God's power that brings salvation is only applied by faith. God's power that brings salvation is only applied by faith. So I want to make something crystal clear this morning. You can have absolute forgiveness from your sins and pardon from the judge of all the earth. But the Bible says in Titus, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Friends, I don't know how you might classify yourself this morning. I was a religionist who was a closet hedonist. But praise God, now I just go by one label, Christ follower. <laughs> because in his power, he forgave me, he saved me, he delivered me. Praise God for that. This good news, this gospel, we have the revelation of God's righteousness by faith, to produce faith, because it has always been and always be the plan of God to reconcile man's sinfulness and bring us close to him as the righteous one when it's by faith. So what are you living by today? Let's pray. Our gracious God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all that you give us. Lord, I thank you for your word. I pray that you would cause us to live by faith. Help us to recognize that it's only by the power of God that we are saved. And it's only through faith that that power is applied to our lives. Lord God, you are good, you are gracious, and you are holy. Help us to obey and live, love you, God. In your name we pray, amen.